Hello, friends. This is your Tuesday edition of Weather Where You Are. I am meteorologist Ella Dorsey, and today is all about Milton. I am also streaming this both on my Facebook and on Atlanta News First's Facebook because it's all anyone can talk about. And also this way, uh, you guys can ask questions, and I'm going to be checking both our uh, streaming platforms, which is Facebook, YouTube, and also my Facebook. If you guys have questions, you can leave them below. And obviously, I will likely try to go back and answer them, okay? Um, guys, this is going to be a really, really bad storm for the state of Florida. Uh, and it d we just got a brand new update in from the National Hurricane Center. Not much has changed in terms of this storm system. It is still a very strong category four hurricane, okay? Uh, it went through an eye wall replacement overnight. So last night it briefly reached 180 miles per hour. That was a significantly strong storm. Um, as you can see, it's gotten a little bit less strong. Winds are down to 150. What happened was it went through an eye wall replacement. Basically what happens with these storms is they can't maintain their strength. Very similar to us, they kind of have to like take a break. Like in the same way where we have to sleep at night, these storms have to kind of weaken and then they can re-strengthen and that's what an eye wall replacement is. An eye wall obviously is the winds closest to the center of the storm. That's the strongest winds. When a storm goes through an eye wall replacement, those winds will weaken and then they will spread out. So the eye wall will get bigger, which means the strongest winds of the storm will have a greater diameter, which actually makes the storms more powerful. That's exactly what we saw here. This thing is going to strengthen again, likely to be a Cat 5 later on today. So this is very typical in these very strong hurricanes. It is still a monster. It's north, about 100 miles north of the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, it is not going to have a major impact on areas like Cancun, okay, but it is going to have a major impact on Florida in the coming days. So, brand new update in from the National Hurricane Center. Okay, they were previously thinking, I'm going through this with you guys as I see it, they were previously thinking that this thing would become a Cat 5 again. They are now keeping it as a strong Cat 4 that's very good news. It is expected to slowly weaken, still making landfall as a very strong Category 3 or a Category 4 hurricane. Landfall is still expected very close to Tampa. I'm actually going to get on here. I have a, a graphic pulled up because it's very important, the exact location. Okay, the I'm looking on my phone. And... It looks like the track has shifted just slightly south, just south, just south of Tampa Bay. We'll go through why that's so important, but it is very important, okay? It will move across the state as a hurricane. Look, it's right over Orlando as a Category 2 hurricane on Thursday morning. So this thing is going to maintain strength. It's going to be a hurricane across the entire state, which means hurricane conditions are likely across that entire state. Thursday morning, and then it will move back out to sea. By Thursday afternoon, major improvements uh, across the state. So this is really going to be really from about Wednesday afternoon through Thursday afternoon, where the major impacts will uh, be across the state. So I wanted to zoom in and show you Tampa Bay. Again, the track has shifted just slightly to the south of the bay for landfall, and that is important, okay? It has a big importance on the eventual storm surge. Now, I wanted to show you Tampa Bay because it's a bay, okay? So it's this inlet of water, and that makes it extremely susceptible to storm surge. This is a, a worst-case scenario for their area, which hasn't seen a direct hit by a hurricane in quite a while, okay? This is the potential storm surge still forecast to be 10 to 15 feet from Tampa Bay to Anna Maria Island to Sarasota to Siesta Key down to Venice. Fort Myers area could see 6 to 10 feet, and Clearwater could see 5 to 10 feet. However, a small shift in the track can mean major differences in the storm surge that Tampa Bay will see. 
Okay, let's talk about what storm surge actually is. I feel like a lot of us, like we talk about it all the time, but do you guys actually know, okay? ATL girl, I see you. This is the largest Florida evacuation ever in history. Looks like Milton might go more south than they think. Okay, let's talk about that right now. Um, first, I want to give you an idea of what storm surge is before we talk about the potential shift in the track. Basically, storm surge is a wall of water that gets pushed on shore by the really strong winds in a hurricane, okay? And when you're talking about 12 feet of storm surge, the ceiling on most buildings is 10 feet. So that's the entire first floor of most buildings. Once you get up to 15 feet, you're talking some of the second story of these buildings. So then this is not only for buildings right along the coast. This is buildings far inland could see six, seven feet. A mile inland could even see two, three feet. So when you talk about 10 to 15 feet of storm surge, that's the reason we have to do evacuations. There's just no way to survive that, okay? The spaghetti models, some of them are still going north, but most of the spaghetti models are right along Tampa or just to the south. And that's, I think, the potential. I don't think we're going to see a shift north. I think, if anything, we'll see a shift slightly south, which would mean big differences for Tampa Bay. Here's why, okay? Hurricanes are essentially big low-pressure systems. Winds around low pressure flow counterclockwise, okay? Counterclockwise, the opposite way of a clock. So if you have landfall directly over Tampa Bay, you're going to get winds coming out of the south that is going to push all that water into the bay. That would bring significant storm surge, that wall of water we talk about, right up into the bay and into downtown Tampa. However, that would mean catastrophic storm surge. However, if the landfall is 20, even 30 miles to the south of Tampa Bay, that onshore flow, that southerly flow, hits areas like Sarasota, Venice, still highly populated, very highly vacationed areas. However, Tampa Bay will be north of the center of the storm, counterclockwise winds. So the wind will come off of the land. It will go the opposite direction. That will actually push the water out to sea. And that would prevent a lot of the storm surge in downtown Tampa Bay because the water would be pushed offshore. So that's the reason it's so important where these storms make landfall for the storm surge, okay? Regardless, even if it does move flat, slightly south, that will keep Tampa downtown from seeing the worst. St. Petersburg might avoid the worst of the storm surge, but it would mean a worst case scenario for areas like Siesta Key, Sarasota, Venice Beach, Inglewood, and a worst case scenario, a, a, a worst scenario for Fort Myers as well. So there's no, there's no good path for the storm system to take in terms of the storm surge. But that is, that is the reason that a shift south might have a big impact on what ends up occurring in downtown Tampa, okay? Um, I am looking at your comments on Land News First. I'm on a carnival that's supposed to port back on Tampa on Thursday, doesn't look likely. Yeah, that's definitely not gonna happen. You probably will be dropped off in Miami. Okay, let me check YouTube. Okay, you guys look good on questions, so I'm gonna keep going. In addition to the storm surge, the rainfall is also a major, gonna be a major problem. In the same way that we saw 11 inches of rain right here in Atlanta with Helene, you remember all the flooding, right? That we got around Metro Atlanta, all the flooding up in Asheville and Northeast Georgia. They're going to get the same amount of rain that we saw here across a huge portion of the state. So from Tampa to Orlando, the, the worst of the rainfall is actually to be north of where this thing makes landfall. That includes Gainesville, University of Florida, Daytona Beach, St. Augustine, and even Jacksonville going to get five to even 10 inches of additional rain. And they've been very wet over the last few days. So there's a significant flood threat. Again, if you guys were watching Atlanta News first when Helene hit, I showed you this graphic, this high probability of flash flooding. The National Weather Service does not issue this often. We were under that high risk of flash flooding, and you saw what happened. Parts of Buckhead were completely underwater. There was a lot of flash flooding, and so was Asheville. Asheville was under that high risk of flash flooding. So not only 
are they going to get the wind and the storm surge? But there's going to be a significant risk for flash flooding in Tampa and Orlando. There's more than 6 million people that live there, and I know that most of Tampa has evacuated. But Orlando is not under a mandatory evacuation. In fact, many people left Tampa and went to Orlando. So Orlando is going to have a huge risk of flash flooding. So it's just a really bad situation down in Florida. There is a hurricane warning across the entire state. This includes Orlando, Daytona Beach, Tampa, Sarasota, Fort Myers. All of these areas are going to see hurricane force winds. And then guess what? Our coastline here in Georgia and part of, the, well, it looks like they've now expanded it to be all of the South Carolina coastline is now under a tropical storm watch on Thursday. That means tropical storm force winds and conditions are likely along our coastline. So although we won't be impacted here in North Georgia, the coastline will see gusty winds, heavy rain, not life-threatening by any means, but there could be power outages, additional power outages on the coastline of Georgia. Okay, so let's talk about the arrival of the winds. The winds will really start to pick up in the Tampa area tomorrow afternoon by tomorrow night. That's when this thing makes landfall. That's when hurricane force winds, you can see that with the red, will move on shore. Hurricane force winds will bring down trees, will cause significant damage, and you can see a large portion of the state will get in on those winds um, from overnight, really from like 10 p.m. on Wednesday overnight into Thursday morning. And then I wanted to zoom out to show you all the yellow, or excuse me, all the orange that you see. That's tropical storm force winds. So it could get quite breezy to even windy in Douglas, Valdosta, even though they may not see much rain from this system. They could get in on very gusty winds. And you guys know these areas were hard hit by Helene. Many still have downed trees without power. So although this isn't going to have a major impact on Georgia, there still we will be some impacts in the very southeastern portion of our state. It does stay quite breezy through the day on Thursday for the Atlantic coast. And then by Friday, everything gets a lot better, okay? Um, in terms of the – I just wanted to show you guys the actual future cast so you can get – an idea of of what's going to happen because we may see a quick increase of clouds here tomorrow but essentially all of the impacts stay well south of north georgia you can see tomorrow that heavy rain really starting in florida in the afternoon making landfall in the early morning hours on thursday by thursday morning it's on in the eastern part of the state heavy rain from charleston down to the coastline and then it finally moves offshore by thursday afternoon so we really the main Big risk is going to be from Wednesday afternoon through Thursday afternoon across the state of Florida, okay? Here in Georgia, we're not going to see anything, okay? It's just going to be really nice through the week this week. So we are dodging a bullet here. Our friends to the south cannot say the same, unfortunately, um, which is awful because many areas across Tampa are still recovering from Helene, Okay. So that is the latest information for you guys. I want to check and see if there's any comments or questions. I don't, Brittany, I'm sorry, I don't know about the information on the free shuttle if you live in Pinellas. Um, I'm not sure about that. I will have my digital team look into that. I will say that... Um, the Atlanta Motor Speedway, which is south of the city in Hampton, they've opened up for evacuees. So if you need somewhere to go or you have friends or family that need somewhere to go, that is always an option. It's open now. You can find that on my Facebook. All right. All right, guys, that's the latest on Hurricane Milton. Um, again, I do, the only real change that we could see is a small shift south in the track, which would mean big differences in, in the storm surge for Tampa Bay, but they're still going to get hit with significant winds over 100 miles per hour. That whole area is going to get hit with storm surge, and the whole state of Florida is most of the, a huge swath of the state of Florida, I should say, is under a hurricane warning. So, of course, we'll keep you updated, and um, I will be retweeting a lot of the social media stuff. Things will really start to deteriorate tomorrow afternoon. And, of course, we'll get another update at 2, 5. We'll bring all of those to you. For now, guys, I hope you stay safe. And I'll see you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. on Atlanta News First.